we've had a couple of sessions in the last few days in the last week as well where we got experts from various partners at nsr cell um, and today we are getting started with a conversation with aditya on uh, on all things uh, lead gen but we, before we get into that we just talk about um, what we do at nsr cell for those of you who are just interacting with us for the first time we are the startup incubator and we we've been in the ecosystem for over two decades we bring together academia entrepreneurs and other players in the ecosystem um we, while we are part of i mean the incubator is not restricted to only people who are alumni or students of the institute we are open to start up from across the country in fact most of our ventures are even outside of bangalore i think thanks to covid a lot of what we do and how we operate has moved online which means interaction like this um uh, have made things easier for us to reach the right founder uh in our time so far we have engaged with several several entrepreneurs in work through workshops interactions uh master classes um we've also incubated several ventures like i said we typically work with early stage ventures and i'll just get into uh the program piece in a bit but largely we, we the adventures have created close to 10000 jobs and counting and many of our ventures come to us with just an idea uh with sometimes just a validation of that idea or poc at best and then they get into scaling up their idea into a business we work with all kinds of founders uh, just for the ease of understanding we broadly work with two kinds of founders one is the early stage founders so these are people who want to unpack their idea uh, see whether or not it can be a business they typically go into a program called launchpad um, we also have a flagship program called velocity and this is for those who are in the early, who are well past their early stage and they are in the early revenue stage right so these are founders who've got some paying customers who've got ventures that uh, are that are looking to scale up and really get a solution for specific problems that they may have uh, we work with several uh, specific sectors as well like mobility fintech uh, to name a few and we also have a social for profit and social non for profit programs so these are for those who are creating an impact as part of their operations uh we also have several other programs coming up and if you you're plugged into our social media you'll get to know more about them but right now we've got applications open for the 10000 women program so this is a scale up program for women entrepreneurs that are making 35 lakhs per annum and above so if you are in any sector looking to scale up this is the program for you uh for the other founders we've also got launchpad and velocity like i said for the early stage and those looking for help and revenue stage as well uh startup essentials week is uh, basically bringing together all the partners that uh, we have on our startup kit so nsr cell has a toolkit of sorts for its various ventures um this has tools like zoho microsoft for startups hubspot ondc uh to just to name a few right we've got we've got several other uh platforms that we have uh, given access to to our ventures and this is just uh, coming together of some of our popular ones so that you also irrespective of whether or not you are already part of nsr cell you get access to what a founder will uh like i said this is the startup kit uh that we have so these are some of our other partners as well Uh, we've got Stripe, we've got Google Cloud, we've got uh, Salesforce, or uh, Razorpay, to name a few. Without further ado, we will. I'll hand it over to Aditya. Aditya is uh, leads partnerships across AFAC for HubSpot and works closely with early stage to growing startups uh, on their customer journey. Prior to Hub HubSpot, he worked at Practo, a SaaS startup across a diverse set of roles, and we are very excited to have him at NSR Cell. I know. we've had some very very interesting conversations in the past and we are hoping this one is too we'll keep the questions at the end that they if you want and uh, uh, we'll probably have you go over the content that you have perfect uh thanks thank you team uh very excited to be here so i'm going to just share my screen and then uh, quickly get things rolling we have a pretty 
I see a strong audience today. So let me just, okay. Okay. So if you can see my screen, that should be, yes. Okay, so here. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Look, uh, so 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 we, 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 we've got a good 60 minutes, right? Uh, the, the way we like to run a lot of these sessions is to ensure that you're getting the most out of it. And uh, I'd, I'd say in, 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 in specifically in sessions like these that I host, um, you know, we, we want we want uh, specifically, you know, uh, when founders are present in early stage teams to just extract the maximum amount of value, right? So my content is very short. Uh, I, I, I don't, uh, I, I typically might have done a few hundreds of sessions in the last five years at HubSpot, um, but we like to keep engagement going, right? So if you have a burning question on lead gen, uh, we'll try our best to answer. And uh, feel free to pop in your question in detail. So when you ask questions as a best practice, um, I'd, I'd urge you to ask detailed questions, um, right? Whatever your problems and uh, frictions might be. Uh, no one-liners, unless that one-liner is really good, uh, which I can understand. Otherwise, we're just going to go on to the next question and you might just lose that opportunity to ask and get your things answered, right? Um, I'm going to quickly take you through, um, uh, you know, what, what 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 I've been doing. And the last five years, my role at HubSpot is typically to work with our pre-seed bootstrap up to the Series A company in this region, which is Southeast Asia, India, and now Australia and New Zealand. Uh, to just figure out how do we help startups fix their go-to-market, which means what we've been good at at HubSpot is sales, marketing, inbound, anything that we can help you uh, uh, on your journey, we'll be able to do that, right? And 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 I've uh, apart from that, I, I lean a lot into speaking about how do you manage your energy better. So if you want to have a conversation maybe sometime later, if you feel uh, you want to know more about managing energy, more than happy to chat. Uh, and of late, I've just, over the last couple of years, if anybody's into coffee, more than happy to have a chat there as well, apart from uh, sales and marketing, right? There are a couple of things that we're going to speak about. Before I go there, in the chat, uh, what would be good to know is like, what's one thing that you're looking forward to learning from this workshop? And I'm looking for a very specific response. But when we get that response, we just pause and I'll move to the next slide. But if you can just quickly put down, what's one thing you're really looking on learning from today's workshop? Mm. Uh, the, the pro tip is I'm not looking for answers like lead gen. I, I want, like, what's one thing that's motivated you to get here? You're spending 60 minutes. So you have to be very, very sure, like, why are you here? Uh, okay, engage. My customer is good. I'm still looking for that one thing. Like, who is going to bring that up? What's one reason that, or probably like one friction, like, I'm, I'm just looking for that one very specific thing. Lead gen, yes, but if you do better lead gen, like what happens? I'm looking for that outcome. Uh, sales, no. Growth, okay, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, we, we, we got that person, it's Namisha, grow revenues, exactly. So a lot of things, and thank you for participating. What we're really focusing on is how do you apply some of these um, principles to revenue generation, right? So no matter what you do, uh, right? Uh, whether 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 you're you're learning tactics on lead gen or whatever that might be, uh, the one thing that I fundamentally believe uh, that it should impact if you leave this session the next sixty minutes, some part of your revenue generation, right? So whatever we, we'll try our best to club it up so that your revenue generation is is utmost important, right? No matter what you do, you could you could run your next sales campaign, send out one thousand emails. If it doesn't attribute or touch revenues, um, it's somewhat not just move the needle in some ways, right? Uh, very simple. I'm focusing on three things. I'm giving you some perspective on what you might know, might not know, and what's happening, how buyers like to buy. Uh, there's a fundamental shift in the last few years. Maybe it's elevated due to things like, uh, you know, macroeconomic situations, a pandemic in the, at, at the back of us and so on. Uh, and then we're going to deep dive into how do you structure lead generation? Because lead generation is, is just a tactic. There are different things that you could do. But at the base, if you do not have fundamentals sorted out, uh, you might not get to the end goal, right? So we'll work on the fundamentals to ensure. Now, the other thing, uh, we had sent out 
for you to download uh, and just get access to the free tools, right? There's a fundamental belief, and, and, and I can discuss on this later, but if you want to get the most out of today's session, I'm not showing anything inside HubSpot, but I'm going to talk through strategies. A lot of what I'm talking through, you can execute it with the help of free tools, even without investing in a paid CRM and things like that. Because lead gen is, is a core part. You need strategy, education, and processes to execute. If you're not executing after you go out of today's session, it's going to be very much meaningless for you, right? So just keep that at the back of your mind that when you go out of this today's session, I hope you execute some of these strategies, right? And from a little bit of more motivation, if you do access and get access to these free tools, I'm happy to give you 15 minutes, but one question. So I'll give you my calendar link by Friday. Whoever signs up, you can you can just put this there, uh, note on the address. And that 15 minutes is for you to just brainstorm on one problem, just one problem. You'll have to give me that problem before, come to that session for 15 minutes, and I'll try my best to help you. Okay, now let's get started. The old playbook. So a lot of you who, you know, where we are, where we are designed specifically and specifically from a B2B perspective, or even from a B2C perspective, uh, there, there's a lot happening, right? Uh, in terms of lead generation and sales and marketing, um, there are inboxes that's getting clogged, too many emails, too much fight for attention. Uh, there's a direct email that, that gets un bounced up because you know, you're just emailing the wrong set of people. And there's a lot of frustration that's happening, a lot of unsubscribe, and there's a lot of noise at the top, right? And uh, that's the biggest friction today because everybody is trying to sell, market better, but you also have to bring down this interruption, right? If I do not know you, and I'm just blindly just sending some email and trying, like my literally inbox, in the last 12 months is like over the roof. Like I do not have time. So I just filter them out. But these are emails that's not directed to me. These are just an attempt uh, to see if I would you know, respond to these emails, but it's just getting very, very tough. So we want to reduce that because you can spend your time with other strategies. And that brings me to the point is like your buyers, people who want to buy from you, people who you want to sell to, people who you are going to eventually convert into customers, they have a lot more control. And essentially, I've just broken that down. Uh, what does control really mean, right? Um, so people don't like, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot that's changed in how people like to buy. It's changing, evolving. I, like, I personally, I haven't spoken to a salesperson in buying a lot of my software, even for my own personal needs, to be honest, right? And, and maybe if you look into your own uh, patterns or you speak to others, a lot is changing. Right? the way we like to adopt services and patterns. And you want to be cognizant of this fact so that you can build your process in a better fashion. Right, um, So that's something that, that we're going to focus on. When I said earlier, fixing the basics, it means specifically we want certain uh, bases to be aligned. Right? Uh, how many of us are uh, selling today, but on a Google Sheet? And there's no need to shy away. You can just say, you can just put in the chat, Google Sheet or CRM. I, 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 I just want to know, like how many of us, of course, selling, you're generating revenues, um, but on Google Sheet. Okay, two raise hands, three raise hands, everybody. Yeah. Okay, a fair bit, a fair bit, right? Uh, not saying Google Sheet is not good, uh, but I'd say that in 2023, it's going to be very difficult to adopt this mentality. And especially if you're sitting in this session, if you've come for the session on lead gen, um, I want you to think away from Google Sheets, right? It's uh, fundamentally, it's not going to help you bring more revenues, right? So if somebody tells you that's going to bring more revenues, um, I, I'd be very, I'd be very uh, scared, literally, right? Because uh, it's a good tool for the right reasons. Selling using Google Sheet, no, it's not going to happen. Tons of free tools are available. Get into this habit, invest. Right? One of the big things that I like to tell founders and anybody out there is invest in the right process, right? And that pays you dividends in the long term. It's period. There is no if, but, and then, right? Uh, a lot of times people come to us and be like, oh, but if I do this, oh, but it is a complicated thing. What if we do that? There is nothing in between, to be honest, okay? 
Uh, and we've seen that across play out across the stage. If not today, tomorrow, you'll be going down that route of adoption. It's best that if you're generating revenues, you get a hang of a basic tool, a CRM tool, something, a tool to help you capture information. Okay. The other thing that you should focus on, right? And all this is the basics. I just want to get this clarified before we go into tactics is a CMS. Anybody still, if you're a B2B founder and you're on a custom built website, just raise your hand. So you don't have a content management system like a WordPress or a Squarespace or whatever, like a Webflow or a HubSpot, whatever. You, you're not on a CMS, but you have a custom website and you're a B2B founder. Okay, anybody else? I just have a few responses. And, and, and if you're doing anything else, uh, I would highly request you just be focused on engaging and what we're learning today. You'll get the best out of it. But if you're just, if your attention is diverted in this webinar, you're not going to get much. Okay. So I see a lot of WordPress. Uh, I see a lot of Wix. I see a lot of Shopify. Okay. So B2B. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, custom and no CMS. Uh, just, just put a stop to it. Okay. It's, it's period. Once these things are not going out of fashion, uh, especially for B2B founders, you need to get into the habit of having a CMS, right? If I dial back 11 years ago, uh, let's go back, yeah, 11, uh, 10, 10 and a half years ago, I used to work at Practo. So in the early days, I helped them build their inside sales system. And when, 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 when people said we have to go and expand internationally, I said, okay, so uh, I need a little bit of pricing change on the website and things like that. And my next developer said, uh, oh, but can you give me a week's time to push this out? I'm like, you need a week? We need a week to push it out. I'm a very lean team, right? So let's understand back in 2012, I was like, we need a week. And I was like, okay, if we need a week, like that's too much. That's too much of developer's time uh, and prioritization. Uh, the way I like to also explain the concept, it's it's not rocket science in a, in a CMS. Anybody in your team should be going to edit your website. It's the basic stuff. You cannot do lead generation just by being on custom build sites. Okay, so CMS part websites, simple stuff, WordPress, choose what you want. Uh, Wix, no, Wix is not your friend in B2B. And I'll tell you very hardcore truths. Once again, there's no if and but in these. Wix is not your friend. Uh, there are certain proper CMSs. Just use that. You'll be happy for the rest of your journey. Okay. The other thing I'd also focus on is custom content. Everybody, you cannot copy paste content in lead generation strategies. One email sending out to 500 people is a big no. Okay, we don't do that and we don't want to do that. So all that you're trying to learn today, ensure that we take something back and pause something. So you're doing a lot of things as an entrepreneur and as, as, a, as a growing founder. I want you to pause some things and accelerate on some things. So the good things you accelerate, the not so good things you put a pause Okay, and you think a little bit, right? Um, you want to leverage a lot of chatbots, right? In any condition, I'd encourage you to leverage chatbots because it saves you time. You can do lead generation, a lot of things. And the two most important things that I feel um, is uh, persona level analytics. So Google Analytics is good, but you can also use things like a hot jar plus other or plus a CRM and analytics combined with Google and so on to, to, to do something better, right? And the last thing is retargeting ads. Ads, I see a lot of people a little bit frightened to use. Sometimes they think it's a lot of money being wasted. Sometimes they think that it's not working. Uh, you have to go slow because retargeting and ads, even in the early days, can give you good ROIs. The one thing on ads, which I'll cover later, is you cannot run ads without a CRM integration, once again. And you'll see me speak a lot about this because ads and ROI on the platform of you know whatever you use linkedin google facebook give you one set of that data which is uh, different than your customers data so you need to combine these two things to get proper roi right for me to tell you and we do deep dive sessions with some of our customers uh, and when somebody comes to me and be like oh i spent thousand dollars or i spent five hundred dollars and i got these many leads i'm like uh, how many customers did you get or which customers were impacted? Can you show me that report? Or what customers received email but also saw the ad? 
And these are very basic questions that you need to be able to answer. So if you're doing ads without a CRM, hit a pause. Okay, I'm just going to pause there and see how you feel about uh, until now. Any major questions I can answer, otherwise we'll keep that to the end. A CMS for B2C, no. So unless you have a B2B uh, angle to it, then yes. B2C, yes. You'll see a lot of strategies here which are applicable for B2B, uh, uh, applicable for B2C, but no CMS for B2C. You, 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 you might not need that. Maybe Webflow. I mean, yeah, a little bit you can customize, but yeah. Wix, Wix for B2C. See, Wix is a, I, I like to look at Wix as a nice hobby website. I might be telling too much of the truth, but uh, I haven't seen good B2B companies on Wix. It, it, there are certain, like our developers have figured out, like, like for example, marketing automation is not a very good friend of Wix. There are a lot of fundamental that doesn't work with that system. So rather we just spend our time on things that work and you don't want to reinvent WordPress works fine, use WordPress, nothing. If it's slowing you down, it's your plugins, not your WordPress, right? Uh, otherwise, just use Webflow or just use anything else. You can use other CRMs, right? Um, okay. Yeah, so we're going to get into other things, okay? Uh, okay, so for example, a, a question that Shweta asked, which ad pl platforms will be good? So once again, I'd urge you to think a little bit more when you're asking questions because I want you to give the answers. We might not have time for all this. So Shweta, the question that you could ask is, here's what we are building. This is the revenue that we are doing. This is what we need to accelerate. Now, can you suggest which ad platform? Okay, so that's just a suggestion. When you're asking questions, be very specific because I want to give you answers, but I cannot look at this question and just give you something, right? And we'll cover more detailed uh, questions at the end as well. So not to worry. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. The other things for B2B st uh, stack is I want you to keep your basic stack clean. How many people are using more than five software for sales and marketing? Quickly. Yes. No. I just, I just want to get a sense. How many people are using more than five software for sales and marketing? Nobody. Okay. So, so, so it looks like maybe a lot of us are very early stages or maybe you're just not using, maybe we're using uh, the right tool. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. That, that, that's a good sign. I always like to ask this question because five, five is still lenient. A lot, a lot of people use, you know, eight to 10 and then they realize they need to consolidate, which is fine. But yeah, we want to avoid using too much of the, of, of this, uh, what we like to call it HubSpot is like this cobbled software. Founder A will say, oh, why don't you try this software? Okay, I'll use that. Then somebody else will say, why don't you use the chatbot? I'll get that as well. Oh, uh, but for service desk, I'll get that as well. Don't get into the habit of going that, that route, right? I want you to avoid that and choose one platform. You can choose whatever platform you like, irrespective, but start getting into the habit of choosing a platform. Either you choose a Zoho or a HubSpot platform or a Peshwak, whatever you do your due diligence and choose a platform and stick to it. Right? There has to be a very major reason why you are diverting from a platform approach. Do not get into this habit of cobbling too much unless one thing, it is moving the needle on revenue. I also like to believe this because whenever I made a decision and that holds good, even if you ask um, um, founders or other uh, uh, you know startups who are focused on better revenue generation, the tools that you choose is just a means to an end, right? It is not going to uh, do something very magical at the end of the day, okay? Your process tools and the, the strategy uh, will derive uh, what you're going to get at the end, right? So be very cognizant of this fact. And I'm not going to repeat any of this, but I just wanted to put it out there as to how you should think about keeping this basic stack very, very clean, not very messy, okay? And the source of truth, at least for in the B2B space that I that I've seen, and I don't think it's shifting anytime soon, um, is somewhere around that CRM space. You need some sort of a CRM to tie it out. If you have your landing page and blogs and website and ads and offers and emails and other tools in different places, you will not be able to answer very basic questions in your business. Very period. If I ask you a question, tell me about 10 different prospects or 10 different customers uh, who bought one particular product from you, but you're trying to upsell them and you send them five different emails, but they've also seen one of your Google ads, but never converted. Can you give me this list? 
it should not take you a lot of time to do this right and uh, because that's how you're going to make decisions right uh, so be in this habit of uh, choosing one source of truth crm and then you add other things what you what your venture eventually needs to grow right i'm going to skip a little bit of this uh, on on this thing but buyer's persona i think you you need a little bit of uh, hang on the buyer's persona so uh, definitely uh, you know uh, try and try and get some of that going if you um, make my persona is a nice tool so i will put it in the chat for people and um, you can use this tool to go and build your persona out very simple if you have any confusion just use that tool build the persona out and you should be good to go okay now um i'm 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 going to, i'm going to keep putting in um a, a couple of other fundamentals here yeah? now we're going to go to um and and basically in a persona what you're really looking for is quantify these things right because if you, if you know your persona well uh, i just going to help you build better strategies okay i'm going to skip a little bit of this persona thing now the important thing in your lead gen before even you start thinking about how to improvise or what to do you need to have a good understanding about your buyer's journey right you might have seen this in different places in different formats and so on but people who are very new to your venture whatever you're doing service product and so on they just want to learn about you build that trust if they can trust you they will give their information so always remember that people if they don't trust you they will never give out information emails phone numbers everything and trust is also a nice factor on what they see on your marketing assets on your website uh, how genuine it makes them feel and if that is aligned they are ready to give you a lot of information uh, i love a lot of the, uh, especially in a d2c consumer brand and thing if, even for anything right um, you will notice that the content and the information that you trust you're more easy for you to share your information and that happens with all your prospects so if you come with five pages on a website and you think that you want to close the next 10000 dollar deal it could happen but it's not happening because of your content it's happening because of other strategies okay and slowly you have to build that momentum right so be cognizant of the fact that you need good awareness content and then you need consideration stages of content and then you need decision making maybe a pricing comparison chart maybe other tools like a um uh, like maybe a uh, you know a comparison between uh, efficiency that your tool could provide or service could provide and things like that and that will help your users down the time right so these are some of the things that you could create um in these stages i'll share this deck so you don't need to no need to in, uh, invest time in uh, clicking a picture or anything of that kind yeah now we are focused on more of the lead gen strategy now a lot of the websites right and we, we if we have time i'll i'm happy to review some um the website should be your biggest sales tool the way to think about lead gen is it starts with your biggest marketing asset uh, which is uh, your website right so when you think about that um uh, the the way i'd like to think is like how do i attract a lot of people uh, then how do i convert leads and how do i make it like an educational hub so think about your website as the biggest sales person of all times right um uh, a classic example is uh, the way uh, people at hubspot thought uh, almost 16 years ago they started off by just building blogs and it's very tough to do uh, you know replicate strategies like that but still you need to have either community or either you have an emailing list which is really good and you're offering lots of value um or either you have a very solid content approach to at least you know uh, build trust through the website and then there are different things you don't have to pick everything that you're seeing on my screen but there are some things that will add a lot of value for lead gen right um so that's something that i want you to focus on attracting visitors converting your lead gen forms your chatbots we are going to cover all that but this is just a broad perspective of how you should think about your website right a uh, lot of times we get into conversations where founders and uh, early stage teams are like oh you know um, it's there i'm i'm doing emails it's not working i'm doing so many ads it's not working and i look at the website i'm like why will it work like your website doesn't have content it's not building trust then why do the campaigns first right campaigns are a amplification to any sort of a campaign an outreach campaign a calling campaign 
ultimately when somebody gets referred to a new service or a product i'm going to hit the biggest marketing asset which is a website and app and things like that and if that doesn't have enough information people like to quickly go off right uh, you'll see competitors and things like that if your competitor has a really good uh, content hub they'll go and be they'll spend more time there versus your product and things like that this is a very natural way of how people approach decision making and um, purchasing decisions and what not so it, it's given right uh, if you are doing lots of campaign and wondering why things are not working the first thing i'll click is what's happening on my app or what's happening on that first the website like where like do we have content do i think um people will trust it enough those are the questions i want you to ask right uh, then only you can go ahead and uh, start improving uh, your things right and from a lead gen perspective we'll cover a few not all of what you see on the screen um and some of these strategies you can you know go and just implement and it it will work if you have it in the right direction uh, it should work for you okay i i i i love experimenting so when when i get into a whenever i get a chance of doing a workshop i always go back into my uh, go back into my 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 own cms which is the hubspot cms and I, and i try to tinker with it so today i built out this page i thought i'll uh, use it as a nice example one of the things i like to uh, uh, always pay focus on is the usp and the uvp right and you might be thinking why is aditya talking about so many things uh before i get into now we getting into lead generation tactics but the fact is if you don't fix this lead generation is not going to happen nobody is going to give you your email address uh, these are very valuables to be honest these are very valuables if, if, to everybody out there uh, i give you my email you start uh, sending me so many things which is not needed right so the uvp when i i i rewrote this uvp right because when you think about your product or your service the a simple way to think is what are you helping your future prospects and customers uh, do better what is that are you helping them save time are you helping them with better efficiencies are you helping them with um what are you helping with do better that helping is a very important um word right i want you to think and then write your uvp right you need to hire somebody to do this to be honest and then experiment build on this this is a very uh, and hence uh, back to my thing of cms i need a cms so that i can quickly edit ab testing and then keep doing it and then see how my traffic reacts to some of this okay the other thing i like about uh, is uh, typically between the first fold right so once i'm scrolling i want everything above uh, a nice first fold of like just catch that attention is like my ctas all my call to actions i want something nicely there everybody doesn't want to get started now getting started now is giving you all my details it's very widely understood so let's not uh, get everybody to sell 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 i want you to first learn more also so when you click on learn more probably take them to a page and things like that and then what i also want to encourage your focus on is the chatbot at least have a chatbot you don't need to have live chat no nobody is expecting aditya to be there 24 by 7 and startups are interested in the program no we have a chatbot use it and go from there okay it, it, it just ensure that it offers information and also captures information okay because that's a nice strategy if you're giving out information you also have the right to ask for information before you give out something in return which is a fair play okay i'll just pause there to see if you have any any questions but if you have a question please detail out the question yeah so i'll we'll just cover one or two and any questions till now and be very specific this is where you are this is what you're doing this is what the problem is now what the question is how do you choose a chatbot um this is a tough one <laughs> look there is there is there is no there is no i don't need to overthink how do i choose a chatbot i would go back if i i'd go back to the basic principles am i using a platform if you're using if you're using any sort of a crm it comes inbuilt with a chatbot no need to overthink unless you come to a realization your whole team realizes that you need a different chatbot okay but if you use a crm tool na just use the chatbot what you have start with that should we use ai tools 
once again garima i cannot i cannot make a recommendation just like this should we use a ai tool i want you to tell me what are you building uh, where are you uh, yeah you have a free chatbot so for example for kanush yes right so if you if you sign up for the hubspot free crm you have a couple of things for free and if you haven't used a crm and you're not leveraging uh, it will be a big uh, um, you know just 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 a waste of uh, resources right you have a free chatbot experiment with it you have a free crm you have a free email marketing you have a free landing page everything that is a part of a lead gen strategy there are tools for free so just sign up and uh, try it out whether it works or not you can take a call but at least you have a system my whole intention is that we give you a framework we give you the education now go and use it because then you can leverage and you can come back and um, are you suggesting the landing page should have form blogs and ad page no i never suggested that yet so this is the main uh, just the web page it's not even the landing page but just to remove confusion this is not a landing page if anybody is thinking this is a landing page okay this is just a web page i'm just focusing on what elements i want to see yeah like whatsapp enable so anupama has 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 has, has, has a very nice uh, approach is that uh, whatsapp enable depending on how personas react i love the concept of a uh of uh, of a whatsapp based in a lot of uh, cases i've seen even in very different markets uh, it's not only asia south east asia india or something whatsapp works beautifully if you think but then you just get a whatsapp which also enables a bot uh, the tons of them i can't um, yet think of something uh, very quickly tons of nice whatsapp bot try them out and see once again you need a source of truth first which is a crm some sort of crm then feed all data Anything it leads to, you can do lots of things. But if your source of truth is not fixed, if that WhatsApp bot doesn't talk to any CRM that you're using, it's not going to be helpful. Okay, so that you should keep in mind. Uh, into the B two C, I mean, feel free to try the HubSpot CRM and see how it works. A lot of B two C startups who use it. Hmm. I'll 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 also drop the link. See. Uh, for people uh, because we started off and a lot of people might have joined if you are just downloading and if you do download you know today and i look it up and you can also book that 15 minutes that i committed so that gives you access so i'll just send the link it gives you access to the free crm to the free chat pod a landing page and so on so your basics are covered the whole point was image to quantify the efforts right mm. so tara i like to think uh, and um um even if i'm not biased whole point using a source of truth and a crm is to increase revenue it is it is beyond quantifying efforts it is to increase revenue period b2b working on a google sheet i'll repeat it and you can quote me will not help you make revenues so a crm will help you make more revenues quantifying is one yes because you'll just have more visibility at the end of the day you will notice and i'll send you a report uh, it's just for you to read uh, i'm not trying to emphasize something that it is and instill something in your minds i will send you a report it's very interesting go through it um a, a lot of our startups own data is there so we release this publicly uh, you'll see the impact of a lot of these basic things i offer professional coaching for b2b corporate both b2b c what should my website at the bare minimum have all that you're seeing on my screen bare minimum nice call to actions good unique selling point this this at least ab testing on what you're offering what is that helpful stuff right pricing pricing is the most important thing i think a lot of us underrate and yeah uh, i i i should have circled in red pricing if i don't see pricing i freak out on a b2b or anybody's website i'm i'm i'm, I'm very conscious what the company is doing there is no reason the other day i was at uh, um i was at this pricing even a few years back when tesla did not have a public page they had their pricing on the website uh, sorry uh, not no, um, spacex even spacex has pricing so there is no reason to not have pricing and once again there is no if but and then to be honest you cannot do away without pricing it's 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 like it's it's a disaster reason you'll start getting very unqualified leads people you don't want to speak to who can't even afford you a good product or service that you're building so why not have pricing the price on your page right also 
signals and attracts the right set of personas okay there's lot of very good research especially in pricing but not having pricing is a is 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 a big friction then people have different notions if i don't see pricing i'm like okay then what am i signing up for so if if i can either i can afford it either i will invest in that service or product or i will not or i will want to compare so at least give me the option to compare right have pricing in whatever state of form unless you are like very pre seed uh, stage and even then i've seen a lot of founders have pricing it's very vital okay even for b2c i, I don't see why there's a reason of not having pricing is it the strategy of giving discount to one and then 50 you'll give one discount and 50 another discount the wholesale strategy is is not really good fit for uh, tech startups no like we like to think a little bit uh, more simplified it makes your life easier and the way i like to think is it makes our lives easier why confuse people or not share relevant pricing you can change the pricing later that's okay you can change it how many times like i i i came here to sell practo uh, i have changed the pricing uh, 13 times that was 10 years back 13 times we changed because uh, not having pricing uh, is a very uh, uh, weak signal you know uh, doesn't build a lot of trust to be honest okay so i'm going to i'm i'm, I'm going to keep going here yeah? because also in the interest of time and i want to overrun it okay understanding seo see there is a lot of things spoken about seo i will not go into that there is something called a topic cluster model so just google topic cluster hubspot uh it's a good starting point for somebody looking into seo because that is going to give you a lot of leverage so if you want to understand seo better topic cluster hubspot is a very nice article uh, a lot of our teams have invested a lot of effort in writing and helping you understand how to work on your seo and in the early days you might not need an agency and things like that uh but i would encourage you to uh, work there now the content we spoke about but um i don't like to think about blogging as like oh it's just a blog and things like i like to think about and i use this word i want you to educate your users if your users are not educated or not well informed they will not make the right decision. so it has a long term benefit i will just list it here not spend too much time but it's given right there is a long huge set of benefits that you will have um so get that the other thing when you do your landing pages or blogs is uh, diversify into a uh, smart opt-in text i see this on almost every b2b or lot of websites but it's not done right why because uh, segmentation of your prospects right when you segment these people oh it's not a customer but also received x emails and you show those very specific people right the the uh, the way to opt in to some of these newsletters or whatever you might, whatever is your offer it is and then you have a nice call to action then you have a nurturing flow which is marketing automation okay uh, so you do the first three correctly and then you build some automation so that they can be nurtured and sent helpful content not salesy content they are not ready to buy if they're not ready to buy let's not send them uh, book time with us so that we'll book time with us so that we can help you yes but not book time with us so that we can um, we'll we'll just give you a demo maybe they're not even ready for a demo so hence you know what i'm suggesting is like the moment you move away from friction see revenue generation is a core concept right you are not going to put your gas off that pedal it it is crucial for you but uh, if you reduce little bit of friction here and there you will just build very better experiences and slowly you will also convert and sell better right so lead generation is one you generate all these leads after you know trying to implement some of these strategies we spoke about but then you mess up your approach you get very is very quickly and trust will get broken so just be very uh, cognizant of the fact and i'll share all this with you so you can just take a look now comes uh, see social media i'll skip uh, right I'll, i'll i'll speak a little bit about ads so i spoke about ads a little bit earlier highlighting the fact that in a lead generation strategy uh, when you are using adwords or linkedin and so on uh, they are anyways helping you with the basic infrastructure right which is post the ad get some and you direct them to a landing page and then you take that journey forward right uh the benefit of 
combining that data with uh, even if you can do this on the free hubspot crm is that it will tell you which customers are impacted if you do not know which customers are impacted you will never have the confidence of investing more in ads so it could give you a nice leverage where you're spending x dollars but you're getting y plus to y plus and even more right but if you do not know how it is impacting my customer if i cannot see this right um then it's very difficult okay so just keep in mind what i like to call is true roi like what's the true roi mm -hmm. and then you can have lots of very interesting so invest some time in learning these there are lots of videos that we can share with you and so on but learn the strategy right and then with confidence you can go and put some budget experiment and see how these bring in uh, better quality leads now coming to chatbot so chatbot uh, this is once again i pasted i just built this out today uh, once again i i encourage you to segment you have to get segmentation done on the crm once again hence you will not see me speaking about google sheet i cannot do segmentation on google sheet and implement the chatbot period right i segment my contacts and my database well i will personalize the context because then i know who am i reaching out to who's coming here what questions i need to ask and then i will use this information so let's say people went to this whole chatbot and they booked a meeting or maybe they gave the email address i can use that information and send it to my business development team or my sales rep they can use that information and decide whether i want whether do i want to do a phone call whether i want to send an email whether i want to send a whatsapp and things like that so now you're using see lead is generated by the time this person individual gives you uh, is generated what are you going to do after it is also of vital importance correct you know you're not just going to sit on this lead or sometimes i see that i input some information on the website and they start calling me that is the biggest um, flaw because i never unless i asked for a call a lot of times i have never asked for a call so let's respect the other person and also respect your time because you will just call and frustrate somebody out right rather drop a text rather send a polite email or rather send something that's helpful to the user right and then take it from there so building these simple automations will not take you a lot of time and effort but just do it in the right direction uh, like for example over here it's it comes on the page and there are other things right i'm asking somebody about pricing i'm asking somebody about products you can ask for the email address and then send them more details about your services and products and so on so use the chatbot strategy to enable your teams you're ultimately also enabling your sales people with this data because now you can share this data as like oh this particular individual signed up for a free trial or they filled your form or uh, they also came to the chatbot uh, maybe now it's a good time to get in touch with them and so on okay now the one thing about anything you do where you're trying to attract is this uh, concept of adding value every time whether it's a chatbot strategy or lead generation strategy or for example this one right i have a value calculator uh, these are very good uh, ways to generate leads right all things like can i build a small calculator or maybe or can i build a questionnaire that will give people something in return if i ask for xyz so this was built by a platform that used to have um, um, mortgages that they uh, they were responsible for uh, mortgage and your Uh, how house loan premiums and so on so i would go through this whole exercise give all the information but then they will softly also follow up with me so it's a very nice value add uh, so think about those kind of things right uh, the other one everybody does it but you can do it better is like providing a lot of value which is like okay like you have this landing page less distraction simple call to action and so on like this is another example i took i just built this out today hey get access to your industry report free of cost give me your this i've given some social proof at the bottom some product information and then if you trust it you opt in if not then maybe you know i'll, I'll try and ab test this page a little bit to and see uh, what what information um, and any other specific question on landing page or chatbot people have any any specific questions okay so we're going to just keep going and uh, yeah or you know in this case it's it's a it's a nice page but then i can just book a free demo and before they ask me for information and this is a good uh, thing a lot of people say should i ask too many questions less questions ask enough questions to enable your team that's how i'd like to think if you're asking too less questions 
then again you have to get on a call get on a meeting additional headache right in short so ask enough that you think and then also give them a little bit of information when people are filling in this form so on the right side this particular company is saying like oh on g2 we have a high performance score okay i can click into it i can read some reviews then come back and fill this information so different people like to behave differently right prospects are very smart right they they, they don't want to just fill this information they know the next thing is they'll get an email they start getting uh, text messages or if, even if the gdpr uh, uh, applies still something will happen you're opting into something so we have to be wary of the fact that how do we treat these leads that's come in with a little bit of empathy as well in short right uh, so ritu has an interesting question how do you build trust signals when you're still starting and reaching out to customers see lots of things right ritu so for example uh, do you have enough content because they're going to bounce back on your website or your or your landing page and things like that um not being um asking uh, or if you think that your product or your service has a a good enough uh, value proposition you can ask them for 15 minutes of their time or you can translate that with a nice um for 15 30 minutes of the time you can do a gift card that's another i've seen a lot of people be creative there offering a gift card like an amazon gift card and things like that and versus their time and so on so when you're just starting out the different ways right uh, ultimately even the email that you write is is building trust uh, we don't need to bombast people with very long emails right the other thing is like how did you get the email in the first place correct so how do you how do you uh, get get all those information from people stop using uh, purchase list that is another big no especially when it comes to lead generation strategies and like you're bombasting lot of emails that's just not the right way this is just pricing in a hospital setup i don't understand this question is just okay so these are some of the basics but we've covered a fair bit of what you can quickly go and implement right even if you just do the basics right you'll start seeing a good amount of uh, value because now you have some connected system you have your landing page you have the website you have some usp and uvp that you're experimenting you have a little bit of ab testing now you have a chatbot right but doing them right is very important just launching a chatbot and stuff like that is 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 not is not going to be very helpful right so i'll open it up for questions right we spoken a lot i'll open it up for questions but ask detailed questions so i know okay digital marketing content creation and branding agency uh, lots of awareness uh, lots of content yeah convert on leads into sale okay so um, so see for marketing seo.com one of the things is you're already giving away a lot of information right which is in your brand name marketing seo so i think uh, what will build people's trust to opt in more is your approach what is your vision on seo um what sort of previous customers have you worked with giving away simple tips and benefits in a email newsletter you can launch a for example this person you can launch an email newsletter on seo individuals profile let's see pull up aditya's profile you will see all the engagements against aditya so crm should solve that for you snapshot um, of yeah um um hi aditya this is shrika from nsr cell so i think yeah. um, in the interest of time we can also just go ahead and have a look at the questions on the q and a box and sure take it on yeah. from there right so um guys anyone any of you have any questions um you can please drop it in the chat section or the q and a box we'll start taking it up from here yeah okay all right so um so, yeah sorry please go ahead. yeah no problem i i'm i'm just, just going to pick it up on the on, on the q and a box yeah uh, um, i could curate that for you aditya not an issue yeah. so i okay. could read it out for you and um we can take it from there okay All right. Thank you. Um, have you? Uh, so sorry for this. I just joined in on this call. Um, have you taken any questions previously from here? No, right? No, not not from the Q and A box. All right, yeah. all right, perfect. So um, we can get started. The first question is from Sheba. She says we are building a business strategy and plan. 
platform which has to integrate with CRM. How can we engage with HubSpot to check on possibilities for the same? It's 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 in the it's in the Q and A section. Yes. Shiba. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're building a BS business strategy and plans platform which has to integrate with CRM. How can we engage? To... Yeah. So for example, HubSpot has this program Shiba. If you if you Google HubSpot uh, app partner program, okay. Um, so that will we have an app partner program. So if you're just building for the SMB. Uh, and mid market, uh, you can build that integration, launch into HubSpot, and 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 yeah, and go from there. Hope that answered your question, Shiba. Um, next up, we have a question from Narayan. He says, um, so he's uh, more so inquiring on whether it is a good practice for him to be sending WhatsApp campaigns on a regular basis to his contact database. So if you have any suggestions in terms of that. It's, it's just very vague. Uh, but Narayan, I, I just don't have a lot of thing. If you just ask me, is it a good practice to send on a regular basis? What does regular even mean, right? Every other day, every three days, every four days. So, so we, see, hence I'm always encouraging you to ask very detailed question. I, I just can't answer it. But if you tell me, uh, like, okay, let's let's take a stab at it, right? Even if regular means every two weeks, if you're if you're measuring what that prospect or that visitor is doing, if you're measuring it on a CRM or some or some tool, then on the basis of that, uh, you can devise a strategy plan. If you're not measuring, there's 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 there's, there's no point of sending, yeah. Um. All right, um, hope uh, so now that we, um, the next question we have is from Nishtha. She says, mm -hmm. I have a corporate uniform manufacturing business. My business is B2B. Are there some different ways that one must approach a B2B website lead generation as compared to a B2C? He shared what must be done to maximize the effectiveness of my lead generation landing page for the above said business. So we just went through the whole workshop just around B2B lead gen. That's the basic. Then there are other things that you could do. You can build a newsletter. You could build a community. You could launch a WhatsApp community just to help and see if you can grow that. You can launch a forum, for example. So audience building is going to take some time. But all that we just discussed today is all B2B. A lot of it applies to B2C. So literally the whole, whole session was around it. Yeah. Can we go to the next question? Sorry for that. I think I was on mute. Um, we have a question from Sharanya. She says, we are trying to build a psychometric test on our website. How can we leverage HubSpot, HubSpot for lead generation with regards to this? So I shared the link. I'll share it again yes. for, for lead gen, right? So see, uh, the basic stuff is, uh, let's first get started with... Um, uh, with getting the habit of using the free CRM tools. Because in the free CRM tools, uh, there is a lot of enough uh, value add for them to build the landing page, for you to build the chat bot, everything that you're seeing. All the lead, I've just shared the link again. Sign up, get access to it, start using the free tools, import all your Google contacts uh, or your CSV contacts into HubSpot. Use the, use the tools first. So build that framework. We've gone through it. And you know, if there's enough interest, we'll run a very practical session on how to do it. But we have enough resources. So get access to the free CRM. You've got the whole framework, chatbots, landing page, emails, um, just the segmentation. Like how do you segment your leads better? And that itself will give you a very good perspective of where you are. Then you go from there. Then maybe if you need uh, the paid tools you can use to start a program and whatnot and you can build the whole i mean it's it's to run your business the whole platform is enabled um but if it's just lead gen you, you'll get a lot out of it anybody who fills your form will go into the crm like crm is your crux if you're b2b i'll just repeat it again there's no moving away from things like a crm you need to hold that data so the data cannot sit somewhere else and allow other things to speak to each other right 
so that's a good start all right um so hope that answered your question sharanya the next one we have have is from amita she says we are a bootstrap startup into the b2c education consultancy space having a small team of five people as of now we are getting our website built up what should i suggest my developer to include and integrate with the website to let you know we do not have a physical office as such and are a completely remote team so if there are any suggestions you have that they could implement to further enhance their presence as such is essentially in coach is looking for chatbot good forms asking the right questions so lead gen forms lead qualification forms are good you need to qualify people especially in a thing like a b2c and that to consultancy so if you can qualify different people with different intent pass that to a source of truth once again a crm and then you go from there right you can also have opt in for newsletters for example get that there share your pricing via chatbot get meetings booked via chatbot so all those those basic integrations you will need everything that we have discussed today you will need a bit and pieces of those alok um see there is no uh, this i have given you this so that i can know uh, specifically um there's the, there's no validity the hubspot free crm and the free tools are free for life so there's a free everything is free all that uh, there's no there's no validity yes when you want to use your nsr cl benefits to upgrade to the startup plan um the first year comes at a 90% and second year 50% and so on but first is let's use the free tools maximize it and then go to the next step if you used it then of course you can use your 90% discount and so on okay i'm going to go quickly to some of the other questions and uh, so that we don't run out of time Mm. No, Nishita's. I've already answered. It's the same. Why do you say Vix is not a good friend for B two B ventures? I I can't explain. But if 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 you uh, you know we could spend next thirty minutes also in this. Uh, why do I see it? It just doesn't talk to a lot of uh, tools out there, right? So so it's just not. And and my um, I have a very strong opinion on that because I've used a lot of these. So I'm saying with that experience, B two B no. Is 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 I would use it more for a uh, you know very I would say let's call it pre revenue stage, right? I like I just did not see anything. I just saw Wix. I used a pre revenue stage. Okay, which CRM to use for ads? Which CRM to use? I mean, I haven't seen like it's the honest thing. Like I haven't seen Salesforce or Zoho do integration with ads better. HubSpot just has a very beautiful. Even the free CRM has ads. So just Neha, I'm just using the HubSpot CRM. I would say there are some things that is just not contextually present, right? So whether you'd find me biased, but uh, is is just there uh, for P two B. There's not much you can do. Any free chatbot. Hope so. Has a free chatbot. Maybe Zoho has a free chatbot. Just use it. Just just use something. Get started. After listening to you, I think we're not leveraging the full potential of HubSpot. How can I train myself? Good question, Anupama. So if you're not using the full potential, I think you should go to HubSpot Academy. Okay, uh, Academy. HubSpot. Com. Tons of videos. Help. HubSpot. Com. Tons of resources. I understand personally. I go to these resources, right? Because it's, it's the, every week we push out a new update. You don't have to know everything in the update, but those resources will help you get up to speed. I can say, and all that I'm also teaching you today uh, in this session, it's also available in different pieces on the HubSpot Academy. That's all free content for you. So go and use some of those. Okay, um, trying to build my website now for a handcrafted jewelry brand. Um, just use Shopify. I run a venture called SHE. Run online courses to personal finance for women. What can be possible? Free tagging. We already covered this. what features a hubspot will help me everything forms chatbot marketing automation in kiran's case we're trying to build a psychometric test i think already answered shri devi venture little audible learners conduct very online courses for students uh, based on the assessment how can i mention the pricing on the website how to track leads how can you mention just paste the pricing i mean just just publish the pricing how to track leads to enroll in an assessment ads Start with a little bit of ads. 
publish more content, thought leadership on LinkedIn, what you guys are building, why you're building. There's, there's just a lot out there. I, I like to answer one. Somebody wrote a very detailed on the yeah. chat. So I want to answer that. I think it was Amisha. Uh, as someone who works with education brands, I have noticed that the adoption of CRM tool is minimal in this sector. While I personally find these were to be simple tool that I usually recommend, I would like to explore how HubSpot can provide similar for larger benefits. Although I found HubSpot a bit challenging to use, I'm interested in signing potential advantages. I mean, yeah, just sign up for the free CRM and then, you know, probably you can use a chat function and somebody, an actual human being can also help help connect you to the sales team, Amisha. That's, that's the best way out, yeah. I mean, for Juhita, we spoke a lot about lead generation. So I think, uh, yeah, everything that we spoke about is like, it starts with a little bit of helpful content, you know. I'm looking at my iPad. So for those of you thinking, why my focus is not in the middle. Uh, anything else that's very detailed? Uh, yeah, Zoho chatbot. Yeah, Zoho has an integration with HubSpot. So if you're using HubSpot's marketing or Zoho CRM, it can talk to each other and things like that. Yeah, that's possible. And and uh, yeah, we didn't cover a lot of AIs because today was just like basics of lead gen, but like there's, there's already a lot of AI tools, uh, some very helpful ones that you can generate a new content, you can generate some blog posts, a lot of these things you can do inside using the AI tools inside HubSpot. So when you get access to the free CRM in short, you can start experimenting with all of this, right? The moment you get access to it, just, just start using it. Um, I think we also have a question from uh, hmm. Shiba Brata on the chat box, which is fairly detailed. I think we could take hmm. this one up as well. Hmm. Sure. Um, so they sure. say, we work with government schools and most of our clients do not generally check on websites or share their email addresses. We are now connecting with them through WhatsApp groups. And we have a smart class app as well as uh, a very, a, another mobile app. What would be the best way to connect with them and draw them to our website and other products? See, the, see, the best way is uh, to draw them to your website because all the lead conversion is happening on your website, right? So if it's happening on your website or wherever, whatever that landing page is, share helpful stuff. That's the first thing, right? Whatever problems they're going to face, you have content created. It doesn't have to be rocket science, 500 page content, uh, sorry, 500 words content, like short pieces of content, maybe videos, maybe instructions, whatever is helpful according to you, that will help their business, your targeted audiences and your persona's business. Start sharing that. Start creating a newsletter. See, a newsletter is a, is a very interesting way. It takes time, but it builds that uh, momentum, right? So start getting people to trust you first. Helpful content, people will trust you. They go there. Let them capture this journey, right? You sharing, somebody going, clicking on a form, who's filled the form, what's happening. Slowly in a few months, once you start doing this activity repeatedly, let's say in three months, you shared 20 pieces of content. Out of 20, 50 people, maybe you shared 20 pieces of content, 50 people went to the website, excuse me, 20 people signed up on your email list five people took a demo you need to see this graph this 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 this, this visualization right so tools like a crm are a good way to give you this once you have this then you can replicate this print if you don't have this there's there's nothing and this never happens on a sheet it cannot happen on a google sheet right you just virtually there's no way to build this out so i i, I need to see this once you do that Come back. I'm happy to have a chat. Then we dive into some of your problems and we can see where you go. But yeah. All okay. right. Um, I think that's all we have for now in terms of the questions. Um, so um, yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining us on this session, Aditya. It was really insightful and we really got to take away a lot in terms of our websites and lead generation. And I'm sure our, our founders and everyone that's joined us in here have definitely had a great learning experience today. Thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us. And um, thank you all for joining us at this session of Startup Essentials. We've 
had a great time learning with you all and um we look forward to seeing you all at future events of nsr cell and um please do stay tuned to our social media platforms and our website i will be putting the link up in the chat box below to stay in the loop with all that we do here at nsr cell once again thank you so much for joining us at startup essentials week um hope you all have a great rest of the day ahead thank you guys thank you everybody have a good day bye Thank you.